All right. Ellen, as you begin, I'd like to uh, remind everybody that we are recording. Uh, Charlie Palacci, the new uh, director of Parks and Recreation, is on board. And Ken Bogren has asked if he can go first. Great. OK, let me call a meeting of the Cemetery Commission to order for March 16th. And uh, we'll do by a roll call vote. Uh, Lee? Here. Uh, Scotty? Here. Barbara? Here. Fran? Here. And Cheris Hugh. Or press it. Okay, um, let's start with Ken Bogran. <laughs> uh, thank you, Alan. Uh, I have a very quick report. Vicki and I have been able to get things sorted out so that we now have the approval of the home rule petition necessary in order to move the Hicks transaction forward. Uh, and so we will be able to get that together with other comments on the draft uh, uh, memorandum of understanding to Rick Bodet uh, sometime th in the coming week. And hopefully by next month's meeting, we will have something proposed for you in terms of to get your agreement on it. Because basically everything has agreed, been agreed in principle after the five, six or seven years that uh, we've been, you guys have been working on it and the three years that I've been working on it. So hmm. it's, it's very, I'm very encouraged that we're, we're making progress. We have, it looks like we have all the ducks in order uh, to be able to move forward. So that was the report I wanted to be able to give to you. Yes. Excellent. Thank you very much, Ken. Um, oh, I, so oh. that thing, the thing we really need, of course, is the map to see what they're, you know, what they're doing and all that. Yep. Sort of thing. Okay, great. Um, uh, Ken, yeah. before you go, is this going to need town uh, meeting approval? No, no, I have the, that's what I, I've got the, the, the home rule petition we already have town meeting approval for. Oh, okay, good. Because uh, I thought we had dealt with it some time ago. It was a long time ago, but it, but it was never followed through. We were able to follow through and make sure we have the documentation that we need, Lee. Great. Good. Good. All right. Thank you, Ken. Okay. Bye. Bye bye. bye. Um, okay. Well, Charlie Palacci is our new um, uh, <laughs> personnel to uh, take care of parks and recreation. And uh, I got to speak with Charlie the other day when I was in um, into the DPW. And uh, Charlie, do you want to uh, give us um, an idea of what your role will be in relation to the Cemetery Commission? Uh, <clears throat> not really 100% sure, to, to be truthfully honest. Uh, I was asked by Stephen uh, to sit in on the meeting. I think we're kind of developing the parks and rec uh, role and division within the town again. In a lot of the places, the parks and rec is uh, very closely involved uh, with the cemetery uh, division. So I think he wanted me to sit in so I could offer any advice or help out however I can uh, town-wise. Okay, and you mentioned the other day that you would be um, overseeing the mowing or the maintenance of the cemeteries? Yeah, I believe those are rolled into our town-wide landscape contracts. Right. Um, which would be overseen probably by myself and uh, Richard Moore as the director of operations. So if there's a, if you see anything that's being missed uh, in the cemetery-wise, you know, landscape-wise, please reach out and let us know. We'll uh, make the right connections. Right, good, good. All right. Well, we look forward to uh, <laughs> to that uh, um, the maintenance part of it. Uh, we, you know, why? Well, as I said the other day, going back a ways, the maintenance, the cemeteries didn't always get mowed before big, you know, holidays and so on. The last uh, three or four years, the cemeteries have looked better than they ever have. So, good. We look forward to continuing that. Um, <laughs> Oh, yes, Lee. Uh, Fran first. I was just oh, going to say, we, we do have some brush cutting uh, issues right now. Yeah. So perhaps that's something we can talk with you about. Sure. Yeah, that would be probably something we do uh, at the DPW here uh, rather than through the, that statewide or through that okay. town contract. Okay. Right. Yeah. So um, my comments, Charlie, were that we have from time to time visited the cemeteries and come up with lists of things that need to be done, many of which I'm happy to report have been done. For example, new fencing at um, Old North and New North. Um, 
but there are things still out there. France put her finger on 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 one, um, and the other is we'll get to toward the end of the agenda, and that's a dedication of the stone, the monumental stone that's been placed at Quay's Asylum burial grounds. I bet you you may never have visited the Quay's Asylum burial grounds. I don't, not that I can say, top of my head. Uh, if you go up Alter Rock Road, just a brief ways, there's two little parking areas. Select the second parking area and walk into um, the open ground until you get to the cemetery. We do need some help uh, in um, repairing the fences there and getting our uh, Ray Sylvia, our sign uh, painter, uh, to put up a sign. He says he's he's got it all ready to go, but um, sooner than later, so that we're gonna have the dedication uh, this spring. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> on, on those two points, we'll get to those um, in, the, in the agenda here. Uh, I did speak to Stephen um, about both those items. And, um, oh, it, so any, anyway, we'll, we'll get to those items when, when uh, as we go down the agenda here. Um, okay, any other commissioner comments? Okay, seeing none. Um, approval of minutes from our February 9th meeting. I would entertain a motion to approve those minutes. Okay, I'll, Barbara. I'll move to accept. I'll second the motion. Great, thank you. Um, and um yeah we're gonna need a roll call we're gonna roll call all right uh lee aye fran aye barbara aye scotty aye and chair votes aye so those minutes are approved um lot sales there have been no lot sales since our last meeting <laughs> and um probably a good thing, you know, where uh, particularly if we're getting close to getting a new section at Pulpus, um, we are down to, I believe it's 19 lots available at Pulpus down from the original, uh, I think there were 125 original lots that we laid out in Pulpus. So um, we've sold over a hundred of those lots. Um, okay. and Ken updated us. So monument restoration project. Uh, <laughs> um, I know we've all gone over the report. And uh, of course the important part of the report are those, the last, um, 500 pages that have you know the pictures and the uh, the condition, the monuments, and so on. Um, that's really the meat of the report. Um, I believe all the uh, corrections that we uh, went back and forth have been included in the final in a final document. Um, I. <laughs> I thought that would be a pretty simple process, but it turns out that, you know, um, anyway, uh, the, the upshot is that I believe that all of the comments and corrections and so on that were, that we submitted, plus the ones that um, Holly, uh, Holly Bacchus, I think it is. Uh, yes. she, she works for the town. Um, she's the town sort of coordinator on, 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 different things. So uh, she was involved uh, on this as well as Erica. So both of them sent in comments. Um, they were essentially a repeat of the contents, that, uh, the comments that we had uh, proposed and so on. So um, Alan, can you send a copy to Charlie? Oh, uh, actually, um, Phyllis has one. Uh, on her computer in the office there. I have a copy of it. Oh, you do have a copy, yep. good, okay. And you'll find that the first 25, I believe roughly 25 pages are 
sort of descriptions of who they are and what they're going to do and a brief background about the cemeteries um, themselves. And then once you get beyond that section, all the rest of the report, of course, deals with the condition of the stones. And um, what they did is they rated this, the, uh, the gravestones on a scale from one to three. And um, so that, that's, that's really the meat of the report here. Now, our, we have to, we have a couple of decisions to make. Um, I did email um, Ellen and Jason, who did the who did the field work and uh, uh, the report and so on, and I reminded them about the estimate that we needed uh, that we needed an estimate so that we could you know, put, go out to bid and all that sort of thing. Yes, um, Scotty. Ellen, um, I know we've asked them for an estimate, but um, I'm just wondering, like. In the, pro in the process of getting bidders and all that, isn't that part of that process? Like whatever the town has to do to bring these people on, they have to put it out to three people or something and they all put the bid in. That's um, correct. I'm just wondering yep. if that's like, if we were to do it, I, I know that we we would have provided the, um, the report and then when the town asked us to give the bid, then as part of everyone else, and we would put that in. So I, I think that's like a pretty big process for them to figure right. out immediately is all. Right. What, what I asked them for, and uh, I did this twice, once when they were still here at that, on that last day, I said, we just need a ballpark figure, something, um, you know, can you give us a ballpark? And uh, Ellen said, well, you know, it depends on what you decide to do. If you're going to pick all the number ones and do all them first and then, you know, work your way up or, um, you know, how, how you plan to do it. Um, so maybe that's, that, maybe that's why I haven't heard back from, from them on that item. Yes, uh, uh, Lee? I'm going to propose that we work with the town sooner than later. Uh, to generate a request for bid. But uh, Scott, I, I, I would say that having an estimate in hand allows the town to do um, an encumbrance is the word, a budget encumbrance that would cover a potential cost. Uh, we do this, the town does this with most requests for bids. Um, and you know, from time to time you see at annual town meeting, that all the bids came in at greater than the estimate. And so we've got to find some more money. Uh, but getting an estimate is, is an appropriate way for the town to understand what the costs could be. Uh, yeah. We don't have to share that with the bidders, but the town, but the town will, will, will need that. Just so we, yeah, so we know in advance. And um, I, I would imagine like when we did the Prospect Hill, we had a number for a number one fix, a number for a number two fix, a number for a number three fix. Right. And I just think it's simple mathematics that they could they could actually come up with a bid quite easily. Right. Yeah. Um, right. There are two things on this point. I did contact Erica and I told her that um, you know, we had read the report. I told her we'd be discussing it today at our, our at our meeting today. And I asked her about the bid process. I said, you know, I understand that we need to put it out to bid. Um, and can you help us with that? She contacted um, um, Brian, uh, Brian Turbot, to uh, help us in terms of the process, the bid process. Uh, you're right there. Um, we, need to put, we need to get three bids for the work. And then uh, once we get the bids, we'll review and select and so on. I do realize the potential conflict uh, as far as asking the people who did the work to give us an estimate, which is why I phrased it as I just need a ballpark figure. Uh, and I mentioned, um, you know, if we did all the number ones and you know, that sort of thing. And um, we are hoping, of course, that they will uh, 
bid on the work itself. So that, that was my concern when I spoke with Ellen. I said, you know, look, I know, um, or I asked him, I said, uh, are, are you going, are you planning to bid? And they said, oh, by all means, we definitely would love to do the work. So. And they should give us a number for one, two, and three, the whole, the whole thing. Right, right. So we, we know, and then we can decide, <clears throat> oh, we're only gonna do the ones or okay. the twos or whatever, when that time comes down the road. Exactly, yes. Yeah, uh, Al Alan and Scott, uh, it, it's often done that a contract is written in phases. And uh, so you can write the contract for all three phases, but implement phase one first. True. Okay, Fran? Uh, at our last meeting, we discussed what they had said to us about the difference between preservation and restoration. Right, exactly. And that they wanted to know what we wanted to do. And I I'm pretty sure the sense of last month's meeting was preservation for the most part, but restoration of certain significant monuments. Am I, That's correct? True. Am I correct in yeah. that? That's what I remember. Yeah, that's correct. And that's exactly what, um, um, you know, what I told them. I said, you know, we, we need, uh, the decisions that we need to make are just that, you know, how are we going to proceed? Do we want to do the whole batch of them? Do we want to do the ones, twos, threes, or whatever? And um, so I did, I did make that point when I was asking for the um, estimate. Lee? I'm going to point out that time may be of the essence, because this is one project that would be a well scheduled for the summertime when people can watch and see what, what's happening to our cemeteries. Right. I made that point to uh, Erica when I um, got, when I spoke, well, when I emailed her about uh, getting assistance with the financing and um, remember, we're going to, the money, we have the money. It's in a CPA grant. Um, I had checked with Ken Bo grant, I think, or around our last meeting at some point. Uh, just to verify that, in fact, the CPA grant is still, you know, they haven't uh, let it out because we haven't used it yet. Um, so that money is available. Um, when I meet with Brian Turbett, um, or however that works, about the bid process, um, I will ask him about the finance, how do we get the money out of the CPA grant and to whoever I, you know, to whoever it goes to. Um, so both Eric and uh, Erica, I'm sorry, both Erica and um, Brian Turbot are, you know, on board with what we're doing. They have some background, to, both of them have background about the project and, um, so <laughs> can I just interrupt? Sure. Um, as we're having our meeting, Ellen just emailed me with the um, the estimate for everything. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So right. I'll, I'll, I'll let you look over it, okay? I'm not going to read all, it all, but um, <laughs> so we have an estimate. Okay. Um, okay. So you, you, you'll send it out to all of us then? Yeah, I think it went to you, Ellen, anyway, and, and Jason, but I'll, I'll just send it to everyone now. Okay, great. Make sure you're sitting down. <laughs> <laughs> that well, number can affect the, how the procurement process goes. Yeah, exactly. It, it, exactly. The more money it is, the more involved it is, as I'm learning. Right. All right. Fran? Uh, just a question. Um, is it CPA or CPC? Well, it's both. Uh, CPA is the act and CPC is the committee. That Thank you. So, um, Scotty, do you have a, a ballpark number? Six hundred thousand. <laughs> well, <clears throat> okay. <laughs> well, we'll have to take a closer look at that estimate then. And uh, well, yeah. Plus, I know two other people that can bid on it. Like from when I originally did my research, exactly, exactly. Into thing, make it a little more competitive. Excellent. Good. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, well, that's good to know. <laughs> Yikes, 600,000, huh? All right. like, Lee, like Lee said, phases. Yeah, exactly. Uh, All right. hand, hand labor is expensive. They, yeah. they, um, <laughs> they, they break it down by cemetery. So that's one way we might want to look at it as well. Oh, good. Okay. I did mention to them that uh, one of the things we would consider today is whether to do it cemetery by cemetery or by, you know, do all the number ones, twos and threes, or, you know, how, how we're going to do that. So we'll get, to, we'll get to that question in a moment. Yes, Lee? I was going to say, when you get to that question, I have input. Oh, okay. Good. Good. Um, all right. Well, let's go there now. I'm sorry, Charlie, first. And I just want to start, as I, I'm learning all this procurement stuff as I'm going through for many different things for field maintenance bids and this sort of stuff. And it, it all kind of comes down to your scope of work and how you phrase things. So it may be best to get a breakdown when you request this is the scope of work to get a breakdown as your ones, twos, and threes per cemetery. So then you're able, when the numbers come back, to really have an apples to apples um, comparison. Mm -hmm. I've learned all this procurement stuff. If you ask for like a broad stroke number, right, it actually it's very difficult to go back in after the fact and find out why somebody was exactly. at six hundred thousand and somebody was at three hundred thousand. You're kind of forced to that lower thing, not knowing if they've missed half the the boat, as it were. So the more detailed, you know, the scope of work is written up, the, the better you are. No, I think we have that in the in the report that they gave right. us. Like it's pretty comprehensive about what needs to be fixed, and so and and that's like that's the reason why uh, when we were working with Rob, um, he he got them to come and do this just so that we'd have that base level so that it's going to always be apples to apples. We're going to know exactly what needs to be done so that the other bidders know that they're they're bidding on fixing exactly what's in the report right exactly yeah definitely it's been a multi-step process and thanks to scotty for getting this you know the initial um <laughs> thing rolling here so um all right well this would be interesting so um i'm just trying to think of how um how how best to proceed here sounds like uh, I, I need to meet with um, either Erica or Brian as far as the nitty gritty of the uh, bid, the bid process. And I think a lot of, well, some of that work should have been done, right, Scotty, initially when you were contacting? Um, well, I went, I went all out and I contacted I, I just looked online, like who was local and who did restoration pro projects. And then we reached out to um, a bunch of companies and about three replied. And then two out of those two seemed to be quite interested in doing it. Uh, but then we, we kind of things slowed down because they had to be done the correct way. Um, when Rob um, said, well, that's good, but you, we've, got to, we've got to put the bid out to, the th to three different people to even come and do the report or whatever. And the person that does the report isn't allowed to bid, but I, I, that's why we have to just make sure about everything going forward now that we do have the report. But what I do know is that when it comes time to um, get bids um, for uh, that part of the process, I do have companies that the town can reach out to to see if they're interested. Right. When it comes to that part as well. Today, What's that, Mike? Is so once they put out the, the invitation for bid, it kind of goes out to the general public. And what okay. I was told gotcha. is you can actually you can contact those people directly and just say, "Hey, there's a bid up on the town webpage." Yeah, I, I would do uh, that. That's how yeah. I go go it. take a look at it for me. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. Yep. Good. Good. Okay, so that's the next step then, and. Um, you're right, time is kind of of the essence. I would love to get this project started by spring sometime so that, um, you know, <laughs> so we can make some progress. But, you know, it, it'll be whatever it takes to get it done. But um, so, all right. Um, I'll follow up then on the bid 
um, process. And um, I'm just trying to think, uh, Charlie, would you know um, the, the cemetery administrator is, I've, um, is Stephen now. It was Rob, but now it's Stephen. Now, uh, Rob, didn't he coordinate the, um, the initial survey request, Scotty, do you recall? I'm just trying to think as far as who, um, who's going to draft the bid document. I don't know. I guess it's Stephen will probably ask me to do it. Asking uh, you to do it at the DPW? Uh, that uh, would be my guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, but a lot of that, it, so a lot of that bid document will come out of probably this report that you've had done. Right. Asking what the work is. So when we did the, as an example, when we did the field maintenance, basically we generated that out of a report that Weston and Sampson had come out and done. Uh, and then I took it you know, and tweaked it to exactly how I wanted it to read. Hmm. So we can go through and, and you know, pull the information out of this document as far as the repairs, that sort of stuff, and then we can review it. And then basically, once we develop a scope of work, we then submit that to uh, finance and procurement office, and then they turn that into the official. They attach all their fancy legal stuff on either side of our scope of work, and then it gets posted. Um, and like I said, at that point, then we can reach out if there's people that. Uh, you know, Scotty, that you've already contacted about who do this sort of stuff, just to make sure there's interest yeah, uh, yeah. in it and people know that it's there. Because a lot of times people don't see this stuff. Uh, so I contacted like a dozen landscapers on my own and said, hey, there's a, a bid out for the field maintenance. Take a look at it if you're interested in throwing a bid, just to make sure we're getting, you know, enough people to look at it. And then hopefully they'll all send in their responses and then it, it's kind of up to finance. They'll get those in and then send it back. Uh, to take a, you know, for us to take a look at. And that's why I say the more detailed we are as to what we want for information, the better we'll get a chance to look at it if they're, if they're close. Um, if there's one that's low and two that are sky high, kind of gets taken out of our hands a little bit and it goes to that little bitter. Right. Okay, well, good. So- um, I think Lee's got something, Alan. Yeah, Lee? Yeah, as I said, uh, in terms of public exposure, I don't think there's any question but that we need to phase it cemetery by cemetery so that um, when phase one or two or three are done, um, we can get the paper involved and get some photos and stories and so forth. Um, while it may make some sense to do all the ones and all the twos uh, separately, um, that could take years. And, and I, I, I really think that in terms of our connection to the public, we need to do it cemetery by cemetery. And then we as a commission can uh, select the phases both on um, what we think are the popularities of, of cemeteries and the cost so that we can slot say phase one uh, within existing money. Okay, yeah, no, that, that, yeah, that definitely makes sense, um, you know, as to how, how we go uh, forward. Um, hmm. and we can also break this down into smaller scopes of work as well. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, in terms of the bid, um, I think we, it sounds like we would have to make that decision prior to the bid as to what, how we wanted to approach the work, whether we wanted to do cemetery by cemetery. And I, I agree, I think that makes sense. Um. <laughs> in, in light yeah, of I the mean, potential costs, like just quickly looking at it, it seems like it's more efficient to do it cemetery by cemetery rather than spread it amongst all the cemeteries doing okay. level one even though that would give a, a bigger impact across the island, it's probably more methodical to do it by the cemetery as we can afford it, as we can figure out how to get new money for it. That concentrates your resources too in the same area instead of having a crew 
spread out over all the island working on you know bits and pieces here they're able to focus on on one area if they have to leave equipment on site you know it just it's easier to work a little bit more methodically that way and then we can focus on those areas in, a, in pr stuff too and say hey you'll, you're, you'll see what crews out at you know this cemetery or that cemetery over the next couple months working on restorations so people know where to look and we can draw attention to it okay barbara um, i'm going to suggest that we need to read the estimate first from the company before we can really go much further today with this discussion. Um, yeah. And also, I would like to know what is our DPC grant money? What is the sum? Um, I'm, as I remember, it's been so long. <laughs> it's around 100,000. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm remembering. Okay. It's somewhere so, over. I, right. So I think we, you know, I think we need to all take some time to look at it before we can really decide today. <clears throat> Oh, Are you yeah, looking no, for a decision today? I think I think we all no, have no, to no. Take, take a little time. No, we definitely need to take some time. Um, what I wanted to do today was to bring forward the discussion about it, so we had a um, a better idea of you know going forward, just sort of amongst ourselves. Um, Fran and then Lee. Well, <clears throat> just to float it by. I think if we were going to choose one cemetery for maximum visual impact, there'd be a lot to be said for taking Newtown first. Because it's not a very attractive cemetery. It's a cemetery everybody sees every day. And um, I, I think it would potentially be a good place to start. So that's my two cents. Um, Lee? Yeah, um, I, I hear Barbara and agree, uh, but that would not slow us down from doing the interaction uh, with town administration so that by our next meeting, we would know everything we had to know about writing a request for bid, specifying scope of work, right. and then coming up with a motion on how best to, uh, to move forward. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I agree. And so um, give it some thought, you know, as, as you cruise around the island, you know, think about which cemeteries and so on. Uh, but you're right, we need to have the information first uh, in terms of the cost and so on before we can really make that decision. Um, okay, so we have the next steps. Uh, as far as the procedures, the bid, uh, the CPA funds, uh, the timing, of course, that'll, that'll depend on once we put the bids out, then, you know, as far as the timing, um, estimate, work, or condition, and so on. Um, okay, it sounds like we have a way forward here. <laughs> yes, Lee? We do, we do, and I agree. Alan, as you talk with town administration, be upfront that we may be petitioning the town through the next annual town meeting for um, a capital improvement uh, fund for the cemeteries. Absolutely, yeah. Um, when, once we get a real handle on the scope of the work to be done, or not, I guess it's really more the price of it. Uh, you know, once, once we get a handle on that um, and make these initial decisions, how we're going to, um, you know, how we're going to proceed with this, um, then we'll be we'll be in we'll be in in better shape to see when um, how much more money we're going to need to um, put into this project. Yes, Fran. Uh, don't forget, we only have one more cemetery commission meeting before town annual town meeting this year. It's in May. Right. right. I yeah, but but um, the warrant for this year's annual town meeting is set. Uh, is. When I said it's got to go to ATM, that would be 2023. Okay. Or, or a special in the fall if they do yeah. a special. Yeah. Sounds like there are a lot of things coming up for a fall town meeting so um maybe the land bank will give us some money alan 
<laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Oh, yeah. you are a wag. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll talk the, to the, the boss. The the town is very supportive of this project, by the way. Both uh, Libby and Erica have taken a personal interest in um, this project, as has Holly Bacchus, who's, um, I'm, again, I'm not sure what her title is, but something to do with the historic background or something. Um, so anyway, well, they're, I'll they're, get it in the minutes, Alan. Yeah, okay. Um, so anyway, there is a there is a lot of interest on the part of the decision makers as far as support for this project. So um, I guess we're we're really underway. Uh, once we get the bid together, once we get the bid out, once we get the bids back in, and we can start getting an idea of how much it's actually going to cost, um, then, then we can proceed from, from there. Hopefully, <laughs> I hate to use that word, uh, let's assume by next meeting, we will have the information that we need to make some of these decisions as to how we're going to go forward. And, and we will all look at that bid and then probably come up with our own ideas on, on how we should tackle it. Absolutely. By cemetery or whatever, and then we can put our ideas in at the next meeting and, and maybe exactly. come up with some kind of conclusion from our end. Exactly. And then, and then something can get to Charlie or something after that. Right. Good. Okay. Well, good. That's, um, <laughs> you know, I've been, I've been trying to figure out how this is all going to work ever since we got uh, the um, initial report. And um, so good, I, as I say, I think we have a way forward here. We have a, a plan and um, um, I'll, I'll stick with it, of course. And um, um, so particularly now that we have Charlie on board with <laughs> just what you need, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. And uh, Scotty, when um, you take a look at, at this information, I mean, you're the most familiar with this work and all that sort of thing. So um, if you have any opinions or thoughts before the next meeting, you know, feel free to share them with us. Yeah, you know, I will. Good, good. Um, okay, anything else on item five, the monument restoration project? Good, all right. Uh, the Black Cemetery Network. Lee, do we have anything new? No, um, several of our members were going to attend uh, a Zoom meeting. Uh, uh, otherwise, we're in the network. Um, we got nice comments when we joined. And um, at this point, I've had no, no, no new, uh, what am I trying to say? No new messages. Now, what, what's, what's the significance or maybe benefit is a better word of um, being a member of the um, network? Any idea? Uh, yes. We are, we are seen nationwide to be uh, a good example of diverse, equitable, and inclusive uh, community. Remember that the, 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 the network is seen uh, nationwide. And um, if at any time we need to demonstrate to um, historic registry, um, whatever it's called, the National Registry of Historic Places, or of the Park Service or any other cultural um, element then we're there. Um, you know what? I'm going to send um, Janet Schulte um, a connection to this so that she can add it to our literature. Oh, good, good, good idea. All right, uh, so is there any particular service that they offer or information or anything like that that they offer that we might 
benefits? Not that I know of, but I do know they have an active weblog. And, and so that um, when we joined, we got some nice comments on, on that log. Right. Yes, Fran? I, um, I tried to attend one of their meetings live and for some reason the link didn't work, but it was, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, it was recorded and posted later. So I was able to watch it. And it was illustrative of problems that um, historic black cemeteries and other places, the problems they face, mm -hmm. largely matters of roads have been built right over them. And so the meeting I attended, um, a historic black cemetery had in fact been bisected by a highway and they were trying to make decisions about how they would manage these two pieces. And of course, that does remind us that once there was a plan to connect Sparks Avenue with First Way by putting a roadway right through Newtown Cemetery. So it, it is relevant. Yeah. So maybe, you know, maybe in general, what it is is a support network for people dealing with problems across the nation. Um, I think it also reminds us of our responsibilities and um, how other people are solving their problems. Right. Well, I have to, I'll have to take a closer look at the website and uh, see what's there. <laughs> Great. Um, okay. Next, uh, old, new, other business. We have, um, we need to make plans for the uh, two things, the cremains from the town clerk at Pulpa Cemetery. Um, as I say, I spoke with Stephen after our last meeting and uh, he said that it's, uh, he, you know, that Ray and Nikki would go out and dig the holes. So, um, you know, they'll, they will take care of, of doing that. Um, so we just, we basically just need to pick a date to do this. Um, and the same goes for the uh, monument dedication at Quays Asylum. Um, we need to have a date for that. Now there's, uh, as far as the work, well, let's take them one at a time. Um, <laughs> um, um, all right, let's, let's, how about a date for uh, Pulpa Cemetery and the remains from the town clerk's office? Again, we have eight. I'm not quite sure how, what we're going to do there, but other than we'll dig the holes, we'll, you know, do that. Uh, we had talked about some sort of a service to recognize um, the people. I think we have five names of the eight different um, urns that we've got. Yes, Fran? Well, when we set a day, then I will, my first um, impulse is to talk to um, Tom Richard. Um, to come and do an interment ceremony and to invite the public. We need a date. And for me, preferably, it would be a Sunday rather than a Saturday because as we come into the spring, my Saturdays are kind of full. So a Sunday when the weather is better, certainly not daffodil weekend, I would say. Um, or the following weekend, no, that, just that weekend. I, I actually will be off island on the 23rd, 24th. Um, of which, which, which month, April. 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 Okay. I mean, we, we, don't, we, we won't be doing it in March, obviously. So we need to choose a Sunday and not that Sunday in April because I, I won't be available. Um, but pick, pick a Sunday and tell the DPW that's when we want it done. Tell me and I will arrange um, an interment ceremony. Great, okay. Um, Lee and then Scotty. 
I'm all behind Fran's notion. I was going to say Saturday till I heard her say how involved she was. But if you recall, DPW charges extra for internment oh. services on the weekend. Uh, right. and, and so let's get some input from DPW. Uh, at the very least, they can dig the hole on a Friday, uh, but will they need somebody in place to cover it in on a Sunday? Uh, and is there a cost involved? If oh, not, I'm, okay. if not, I'm behind Fran. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, Scotty. Scott, you're muted. Can't hear you. <clears throat> Sorry, I'd like to have a stone ready uh, in time for that, but um, that would require figuring out what we're going to put on it and all that. So, and we can always do it later. Oh, that's a good point. I for uh, hmm. because uh, you recall we had we said did. that we would donate a stone for that, and um, similar to what we did for whale oil gas. And so it's just a matter of what to put on the stone. Okay, let's consider that uh, for a moment. As I say, we there there will be eight urns that would be putting in the two plots. Um, 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 hmm. Are you sure? What, 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 now we're talking about a single stone, right? For, um, yes, a one by two. A, a one by two, okay. Yeah. Uh, so what, what, <laughs> what do we want to put on the stone? Good, good question. Fran, do you have any, or Barbara, any ideas? I think we should put the names on that we know. Are they going to, they're going to be in two plots, right? Oh, we have one stone, maybe the one stone spans the two. Yeah. Uh, or or if it's two, if it's two plots, then I think we should put the three names or whatever and then, and then two and then just say and X unknown. Um, and maybe we should go for like, you know, a Sunday in May so that it gives plenty of time for um, the stonemasons and... And maybe we could finish the wording for um, April's meeting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Would, would there be any sense in doing the two cemetery dedications? I mean, I know one is not a dedication. On the same day, since it's virtually across the street? Well... <laughs> no? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I, uh, you know, that's a... a what does the committee think or the commission think? Probably not, but I just thought I'd throw it out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Uh, two questions then before us. First of all, what are we going to put on the stone? It's a, um, a, a, a one by two, 12 by 24 inch stone. And um, all right, let's, let's, <laughs> Let's see if we can come up with some wording for next uh, for our April meeting. Um, do, do we write I, something I, like? Sorry, Lee. I was going to say I'm happy to accept the expert's opinion, Scott. If you if you come in with a draft or even send it to us before the meeting, that would be great. Yeah, because um, I was just thinking, do we write something like "Here lies the remains of what do you call them unclaimed"? That's busy. That's or busy. the unclaimed remains of, and you could just list the people that we know. Right. But Tell something like that. Tell unclaimed remains. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we say Nantucket unclaimed remains, then the names of the people we know, and then, and three, whatever, three unknown. Is that correct? Yes, plus, yeah. plus three unknowns. Plus three unknown, and then yeah, I can yeah, I can send you guys the proof, and then we can yeah. talk about it. Do do we have the names? Five. We have five names. We have uh, five names. And I I didn't I, I didn't think we had eight sets of remains. Do we really have eight? We have eight. Yes. We do. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's proceed. With, with that, so uh, send 
Scotty, any thoughts or suggestions? If you could get me the names, that would be great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, Alan, um, this is not to deter any uh, decision on dates. I just won't be available in May. Oh, that's right. You're going to be in. Yeah. Yeah, but as 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 a very non-observant person, um, you don't need me at the dedication. <laughs> well, <laughs> you'll be there in spirit, Lee. Yeah, I know. All right. Well, um, uh, the quays um, one. I thought that was dependent on the sign and the new fence posts at the corners. I mean, that's what we wanted to have in place in order to do the um, yeah. dedication. And Fran makes a good point. May, May, May gives half of March and all of April plus whatever's left in May uh, for DPW to do that. Sure. Oh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Sorry. I'm confusing quays with pulpus. We could do pulpus tomorrow. We could, but the weather isn't. Yeah. <laughs> but in terms of the work needed, it's eight holes. It's quays where we need the fences and um, the, sh the shrubbery cut back. Is the sign in place or not? <clears throat> is the sign on pulpus road, has it been put in place or is it not? Don't yes. think it's there. Is it? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. The, the, at Quaisasan? Yeah, that stone. Uh, was, no, not the uh, stone, the sign on Pulpus Road. Oh, uh, yes. The sign on Pulpus Road is there. And okay. in the cemeteries, or in the two parking areas there, uh, there is a, there's a metal sign that says cemetery in each one of those. Um, Ray is going to replace those metal signs with some wooden signs um, that um, you know <laughs> that are a little more attractive than the metal ones that you know, say cemetery on them. So well, the only the only crucial thing is making the cemetery itself look a little better by replacing the rotten fence posts at the corners and getting rid of a bit of the brush that's grown into the cemetery area. Is that correct? Yes. That yeah, that's that's correct. One of the issues, though, uh, I spoke with Stephen about the um, dedication at Quays Asylum, and I mentioned the the fence, um, the four corners of the fence, and the brush and so on. The he mentioned there's a problem. How do they get their equipment in there? Because they need to get. Um, <laughs> They need, you know, they need to get um, either, uh, well, I don't know what, what they're going to use, but whatever piece of equipment they, they've got to go in and, and do that. Um, I know that they, when they did the, the uh, fences at New North and Old North, that they had um, I don't know, a pretty big piece of equipment. Um, well, how did they do it the last time? They didn't. <laughs> they didn't. We did it. We did it with. Um, it was done with um, loppers and a DR field machine, a walk behind brush thing. And the fence and the fence things at the corners. Yeah. Um, well, the the fence those uh, um, the fence corners haven't been touched. I mean, th they're still there. They're just. Um, Hmm? They're pretty rotten. Yeah. Well, there. I think there's just one of the rails out of the say two, four, six, eight rails altogether. Because remember, you have a post, and then mm -hmm. oh wait, each one has four, so it'd be sixteen rails on there. So it's just replacing mainly the rails, and of course, getting the post in there to uh, dig. Yes, Lee. I think this is an issue that we do not have to spend any time on. Um, I'm going to suggest that Charlie go out there, if necessary, with one of the DPW people and see what it takes to disconnect the uh, cable and then just drive through the space that, that, that's there. 
let's just leave it to uh, the technical experts to figure out how they're going to get their machine there. Uh, otherwise, we're just going to spend a lot of time guessing at something that we know very little about. Okay. All right, uh, Barbara. Well, let's let's put a ballpark date on of May twenty second. It's a Sunday. It's better weather. I don't believe it's any. It's not Fagawi or any of those things. Um, and that gives the DPW plenty of time. And it gives us plenty of time to get Tom Richard or whoever. Oh, but Tom Richard was for Pulpus. Do, I, don't, I haven't even thought about. Oh, Pulpus. OK. OK. What do you think about May 22nd? I think it's good. I mean, we could just pencil it in and see if it works for everyone. Yeah. OK. <laughs> All right, and if worse comes to worse, if um, well, anyway, all right, let's aim for that and see see what see what happens um, as far and as that. another thing is back when we dedicated the Quays Asylum Cemetery to begin with, um, we also did Settlers Landing on the same day. So there's a precedent for doing two things on the same day. It might work. Oh, it might. That's, yeah, that's I true. I found some newspapers that the cemetery commission is doing these things. Let's do it okay. all on May twenty second. Okay. All right. Um, let's put that in the flow. We'll put it that way. Um, we'll aim for May twenty second. And um, we'll see. Um, Charlie, will you be able to uh, go out and take a look uh, and scout, or should um, Stephen send maybe uh, Nikki out there to take a look? Oh, uh, Charlie, you. you're muted. You're... Uh, it might be better to have Nikki take a look at it because he'd probably be the one to actually do the. Works. We you know that way. First, firsthand, they'll know Nikki. what they're looking at. Yeah. Okay. Nikki, is that what you said? Nikki should take. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Or, or I can, or I can. You know, we can put it out to, uh, to Mo, and then you know, whoever he decides. But Nikki's the one usually does the work in the cemetery. It might be best for him to have a look at it. Okay. Um, now, should I follow up with with that? put the request into, uh, normally what I do is I will give Phyllis a request and she'll give it to Stephen who gives it to, um, anyway. Is that yeah, if you wanna put the request, that's the easiest way. That way it, it triggers the, the whole line. Okay. We're, we're right. trying to make sure we're, you know. Uh, Alan, and, 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 and I know you know this, but just to be um, explicit, um, to keep the Conservation Foundation apprised of what we're doing. I, yes, I've been doing that all along and, and I will continue. Uh, I, I tried to get them to see if they could replace the post because it's on their property, but <laughs> they said, wait a minute, it's a town cemetery, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, okay, I'll, um, I'll work on, um, on that. Okay, I think that brings us oh, to the end of our agenda. Is there anything else that we need to uh, discuss? Yeah. You, you had uh, written, sorry, Barbara. No, you go ahead. You, so, uh, well, you had written um, Zoom or in-person meeting. Oh, um, right. We're still under the directive to meet via Zoom. Um, there's a, I know some of the different, like the select board is doing, um, in person and they're doing a Zoom thing. The land bank is doing the same thing. We, I have a meeting this afternoon and uh, we're doing the same thing. We have a, a Zoom and a, an in-person meeting. Uh, I, I put that on there just to see what the preference of the committee is if, if we have a preference, if we get a choice. We may not have a choice, but uh, yeah. Uh, Lee, did you have a comment? Uh, I, I did, but I think you, you've got us right on track. Um, we've heard from town administration, in particular, Erica Mooney, that if we go to in person, she's got to sort out all the meeting times and meeting places, and she's not sure she can get them all. 
So with a response to your comment, uh, if they ask for us to stay by Zoom through April, that's fine. Eventually we'll go back to in person, but it's going to require a meeting space. Exactly. Well, we used to meet out at the DPW there. Yeah. Um, although, I just, Charlie, is that conference room still available in back or is that? It uh, is. Yep, the conference room is still, still available. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> okay. Well, we only meet once a month for yeah, an no, hour. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah we, use it, we use it for you know, group Zoom. Okay. Well, well, we'll wait until we get a directive from Erica in terms of, you know, um, and you know, we'll, we'll take a vote or you know, whatever, whatever is necessary at that point. So, okay, anything else to come before the commission this afternoon? Good, well, thank you. It's been, uh, I think we, we, we've cleared a pathway to get some projects done here. Always good to have uh, forward progress and <laughs> we'll see if we can keep up the momentum. So good. All right, if there's nothing else, then um, I would- uh... Thank you all. You will first hear that the recording has stopped and then I will uh, close the meeting. Thank you all.